Okay, I think uh, after this nightmare <laughs> that we listen to, we'll have a nice session with, uh, you know, using, I mean, uh, it's basically from Euromonitor. They have a lot of reports and done a lot of work on this. So we'll have a session on mega trends that are shaping color cosmetics. We did skin care, some lot of hair care, and now the makeup. Exciting. For Neha, definitely. <laughs> okay, so let's listen to uh, Anul Sareen. I don't want to climb up. Anul Sareen, is, uh, he uh, works with uh, Euromonitor. He's responsible for research of beauty and fashion industry. That includes apparel, footwear, personal accessories, eyewear, luxury goods, beauty and personal care, and consumer health for India. He is involved in developing qual quantitative, qualitative market information for these verticals. And he authors several national reports. So we'll, let's give a big hand to Anul. And welcome. And we are waiting to listen to what you have to tell us, what kind of nightmares you're going to give us. Hello, am I audible? Okay. Good afternoon, all of y'all. My name is Anul Sareen, and I would be speaking on the topic trends that will shape the cosmetics business in the future. I work as a senior research analyst at Euromonitor International, and I track the beauty and fashion vertical. So choosing trends as a topic for discussion is, uh, was quite relevant for me because companies as of now are facing a very global environment. It is a very dynamic environment and they would want to know how uh, they could become more uh, sustainable in terms of growth and continue to innovate their offerings. So before I start a little bit about what we do at Euromonitor. So Euromonitor is a UK based market research agency. We have global offices across 15 countries, uh, one of which is in Bangalore. And uh, we offer uh, market research insights for 210 countries and territories. We speak about consumers, industries, economies, and on different other topics. Uh, we have two major offerings at Euromonitor. One is a passport, and the second one is EMI Consulting. The passport is a research database where we provide uh, insights to our clients. And it is a repository of multiple uh, important documents. And uh, EMI Consulting is our consulting business where our analysts try to answer commercial and business questions of our clients. So we hold expertise in these uh, specific industries. These are five major verticals. Uh, number one would be beauty and fashion, which I track personally. Apart from that, we have drinks and tobacco. We have uh, food and nutrition. Then we have uh, services and payments, and also food and nutrition. We also offer market research insights on economies and industries. Under economies, we speak about topics such as business dynamics, cities, and under consumers, we try to speak about digital consumers, how are they evolving, and the changing lifestyles of people. So this would be the agenda for my presentation. I would try to cover these four topics in detail, uh, post which I would be taking your questions. So the number one would be the industry snapshot. Over here, I would be covering uh, the global color cosmetics market. How is it growing? Which are the major growth areas or which are the major countries that are showing growth? The next would be about the Indian color cosmetics market. How is it shaping up? Uh, which are the major categories that we expect to grow in the coming years? The next one would be what are mega trends? Over here, I would be speaking about how a normal trend shapes up to become a mega trend. How is it a bit different from your normal trends? Next would be mega trends shaping Indian color cosmetics. So here I, would, I have handpicked uh, three of the major mega trends that uh, we at Euromonitor feel would be impacting color cosmetics in the best possible manner. 
lastly the key takeaways your companies or your audience could take uh, major key points and build your strategies to proactively be prepared for the coming future so over here we see that the global color cosmetics industry is growing it is uh, pegged at 69.8 billion us dollar as per 2018 we project this particular segment to grow at 6% cagr in the coming 5 years uh, emerging economies continue to be the biggest contributors as of now to the color cosmetics business if you see india as of now is ranked at number 15 in 2018 as per our research but we are projecting that it would enter the top 10 and be number 9 by 2023 so what is shaping this uh, growth so we know that consumers now are ready to spend the higher amount of money for their products because they have higher disposable incomes and apart from that there is also a very large untapped population in the country the indian color cosmetics industry is pegged at 1.1 billion us dollar as per 2018 study and we projected to grow at 14% cagr in the coming 5 years so uh, in this particular category if you see facial makeup and eye makeup are the ones that are very untapped for now but we see a very strong growth coming from these categories and we expect them to grow at 18% cagr so uh, euro monitor also speaks about uh, different uh, surveys and we also conduct surveys so what are mega trends so under this i would be covering what these mega trends are so mega trends can be defined as trends which are uh, relevant to more than one industry something that would be relevant to cosmetics could also be relevant to food and nutrition so these are trends uh, which are known as mega trends apart from that mega trends are trends which would have a longevity of 10 to 15 years we can see that their relevance would be uh, very very important in the coming 10 to 15 years so how does a mega trend come into reality what is the logic behind it so these are the five major drivers that form to be the foundation of a mega trend so which are these five major drivers number 1 is shifting economic power number 2 is technology then it's population change then is environmental shifts and pressure and lastly changing values so coming to the first driver shifting economic power we see that in a globalized market uh, countries such as us or uh, japan are not growing that fast they have saturated or they are st having a stagnant growth so companies which have already done well in this market are now looking for better sources to sustain their growth so they are moving to emerging economies such as india china or mexico to sustain their growth so we see this would drive the next uh, the future for these companies next is technology so we see that companies are now incorporating lot of digital techno digital technology for the consumers to enhance their experience so we know that artificial intelligence or virtual reality are now being implemented in stores or even on online websites of the companies to enhance the overall experience of a customer so the next point is population change we know that urbanization and globalization are now a reality people are moving cities they are trying to move from urban from rural to urban areas or they are even trying to move into different countries the reason behind this is for a better employment opportunity or something else but this is changing the way the consumer is making a purchase decision they are thinking differently and their requirements are changing as per this next is environmental shifts and pressures we know that climate change is now a reality we know that there is a change in uh, weather patterns the rainfalls are increasing or decreasing depending on the location of the city so how are these going to impact the future how companies adopt to this and try to showcase a more sustainable approach towards the society uh, lastly it's changing values we know as per generation the way they view things or the way they view life they have their own value sets so like uh, sir spoke earlier that uh, baby movers had a different sort of thought process so earlier they would speak about financial security being the main uh, uh, foundation for their future things however as per the gen z they would want to uh, spend more they would want to follow their passions they would want to splurge and live a better lifestyle so these are the mega trends that uh, we feel would be important for uh, various businesses out of this i have picked the top 3 ones which i feel would be important for color cosmetics the number one would be premiumization followed by connected consumers and lastly would be ethical living so premiumization 
so we see that uh, companies now are being more global they are introducing products in different countries they are moving to different regions to sell their products so this is also possible because of e-commerce so it has become easy to access different markets it is there are limited entry barriers for these companies so on the other side even consumers are now at advantage they have a lot of options they are exposed to different product profiles so but this is only possible if you have an increased uh, disposable income so a region such as india now experiences higher disposable incomes consumers can decide what they want to purchase so earlier it was all about lower price points but consumers now, now as of now in india want products that provide a differentiated attribute so if you speak about the first point it's personal consumers now seek products that give them a personal identity they would want to relate to the product uh, next uh, this is mainly because uh, they would want to lead a different lifestyle they would want their products to showcase that lifestyle because of this they are becoming less brand loyal and more towards the attributes that the product is giving to them next would be added benefits we see that the lifestyle of a consumer is now changing they are going out to work so especially women who are consuming color cosmetics are moving out to uh, offices for education which earlier might not be the case so consumers now are also spending a lot of time in travel or at their workplaces so they are seeking products that would provide them a multifunctional benefit they would one want one product that would solve all their problems so they are seeking or they are ready to pay a premium for these sort of products so what could co companies do to cater to these premium customers so i have put down these three uh, aspects that a company could inculcate in their offering number one would be added benefits which is a continuation of the previous previous slide so companies such as lakme have already launched the natural range in the natural 9 to 5 range so these cosmetics already have natural ingredients such as aloe vera or honey so they would want to uh, woo consumers by saying that they have natural ingredients as an added benefit apart from that even if you see at products from l'oreal they have anti pollutant ingredients in a current uh, scenario where has a lot of pollution in the country these try to market themselves as uh, being more user friendly for consumers next is curation and collaboration so we see lot of beauty uh, companies are now collaborating with fashion designers so they are trying to bring up with a, they, they are trying to come up with a unique offering for consumers consumers are seeking for these products they are ready to pay, pay a premium for these products because they feel that uh, this differentiates them from the crowd for example if you see the uh, see nike had recently launched its cosmetic range in collaboration with masaba gupta it was a very huge hit in the market uh, consumers are wanting to purchase these products especially the young consumers they find that these offerings are unique they are coming in a cardboard packaging they look very tangy and youthful so even nike is benefiting from this they ha and on the other hand masaba gupta is benefiting from the large distribution channel that nike offers so it is benefiting both sides from a manufacturer's point of view and consumers are using this to get unique offerings next is personalization and customization over here consumers are now using lot of digital tech to uh, prepare the prepare their offerings even companies are trying to utilize these digital technologies to enhance the experience of the consumers so if you see a brand called mc beauty they allow consumers to select the ingredients on the website they would give a list of three to four ingredients that a consumer could select from they can also select the color of the cosmetic that they would want to select and they could make a final product as per their choice so mass versus premium color cosmetics india has largely been a mass color cosmetics market if you see it has a very high contribution in the indian landscape however in the coming years we project that the premium color cosmetics would pick up it is expected to grow at a 21% cagr in the coming five years as of now it is pegged at 130 million us dollars uh, apart from that we at euro monitor also conduct a beauty and lifestyle survey on a yearly basis so as of our 2018 beauty beauty survey we saw that consumers are opting for premium formulation uh, almost 48% of our consumers who took the survey are saying that they are ready to pay an extra buck to get a premium offering and more uh, and less people are opting for lower price points this is largely because of the higher disposable incomes that are at hand to these consumers next mega trend would be connected consumers so who are these connected consumers connected consumers are known to be people 
who have access to more than one device and they are accessing the internet using these devices. So why are these consumers going online? The biggest uh, of the major factors that are there, one is shopping online, second one is for entertainment and third one is to be more updated about what is happening in their surroundings. So earlier computers were the only device that allowed access to the internet. However, as the penetration of internet continues to grow and the accessibility to other devices such as smartphones or iPads are growing, companies are trying to leverage this platform. So if you look at this graph, you will find that earlier the contribution of uh, internet retailing to the entire color cosmetics industry was very minimal. However, as of 2018, there has been a multifold growth in this contribution. Though retail outlets are still very important and the largest distribution channel for color cosmetics, they are reshaping or repositioning themselves as engagement centers for consumers. So if you look at the example of Nika, Nika was originally an online or e-commerce website that sold uh, color cosmetics, but now they have also launched their distribution channels. So this is mostly a place where people can go and seek what are the different brands available to know more about Nika, its private labels and the other offerings that are there. So, so we saw from a company's point of view, they are trying to leverage e-commerce websites or the internet retailing platform. And uh, they, why are they particularly doing this is mainly because of the limited entry barriers. They can reach to a la larger audience to social networking websites such as Instagram or Facebook. However, what is motivating consumers to go online and purchase? What are the major factors that is boosting internet retailing on the behalf of consumers? So as per a lifestyle survey, as of 2019, there were five major motivating factors for consumers to go online and purchase. Number one was best price. Consumers are now going online and they are comparing different e-commerce websites. They are looking for the best price available. So this is one of the major uh, power they have in their hand when it comes to selecting a product. Next is variety of brands. So if you see, you might go to your nearest retail outlet, but at times they might be out of stock of your favorite cosmetic. So however, if you go online, you can compare or you can see different websites and find your favorite cosmetic and get it shipped to your home. So this is another factor which motivates the continuous availability of products. Third is ability to order at any time from anywhere. From a convenience perspective, consumers find internet retailing the most suitable. They can order from the comfort of their home or even from office when there's an instant sale that is going online. Next is free shipping. So in this modern era where maybe uh, a person might be staying away from his family and he might want to gift a particular product to his near and dear ones, internet retailing comes into play. Consumers are more motivated to go online and shop genuine products and ship it to their near and dear ones. Last is ease and availability of delivery. People who are now working may not be able to collect their uh, particular products uh, you know, from shops. They do not have enough time or they would want products to be shipped to their office space. So this is where again convenience comes into play and consumers are seeking online platform to make their purchases. Lastly, ethical living. Again, uh, what is ethical living? We define ethical living as a life guided by morals or ethical values. Consumers are now seeking more sustainable options uh, as part of their living. They would want that their actions do not adversely impact the environment or any, any other living being in general. So if you see in India itself, again as per a lifestyle survey, people are becoming more aware about uh, labeling. They are reading the labeling. They would want to know if a product is natural, organic, or uh, complies to uh, different uh, regulatory bodies. So what can companies do to tap this particular opportunity? How can they demonstrate that they are more sustainable or they are ethical in their approach? Number one could be going towards waterless cosmetics. So we know that water is becoming more deficient. Fresh water resources are decreasing. We have everyday people conversing about the same topic. So companies such as Remy Cosmetics have already launched uh, waterless cosmetics. So something that could be a business opportunity for a lot of companies. Apart from that, Amore Pacific, which sells the Innisfree brand in the country, has announced that it would be using rainwater to manufacture its products. So this creates a lot of opportunities for other cosmetic brands also. Next is transparency rules. We know that uh, labeling is a topic that a lot of companies are talking about and consumers are also talking about. They would want more and more uh, transparent labeling. They would want to know where these particular ingredients are sourced from. 
are they ethical, are they sustainable. So companies such as Soltree have uh, mentioned on their labeling that they are certified by BDI Germany as natural and the company mentions that it is utilizing Ayurvedic uh, ingredients such as uh, camphor, ghee, almond oil to make their products. Last is recyclable packaging. So again packaging has been a ma major topic for debate. Companies and consumers are talking about it alike. So to showcase that they are more ethical, we have to move from plastic packaging. Though a lot of companies have introduced cardboard packaging as an alternative, but there is a lot of research and development that still has to go to make it more functional and uh, acceptable in the society. So companies again such as Masaba Gupta and its collaboration with Nika, the uh, packaging of the product has partially uh, cardboard being used. So again a shift towards more sustainable and environmental uh, friendly options. Lastly, uh, what could be taken away from the presentation? The number one point would be quest for options. So we know that consumers are now having higher disposable incomes. They do not mind splurging a little extra for quality products. So this also offers companies the chance to differentiate themselves. If they try to sell a product that would uh, try to reach the masses, consumers, are, premium consumers are not going to buy it. They do want to feel differentiated. So this gives an opportunity for companies uh, to offer these sort of products. And if they are very successful in the market, they can also charge a higher unit price for these products. Next would be technology. We know e-commerce websites are flourishing. Companies are uh, going online to sell their products. Consumers are getting wide options to select from. However, this is also resulting in a challenge. Why so? Consumers are now feeling confused. They are bombarded with so many options that they don't know what they want and they do not have accurate or more optimized solutions coming up. So from a technology perspective, companies have to invest more in refining their offerings or their searches to different consumers. Next is data. We know as we continue to shop online or even through retail outlets as of now, our personal information is being shared with the companies. So com companies have more and more access to one-to-one -one information about the consumer. So this is giving an opportunity to the companies to uh, offer more curated products or more personalized products to the consumers. So something as an opportunity for premium consumers uh, that the company could make. Next is physical locations. As earlier spoken that physical locations are now uh, continue to be important and they are the biggest channel of distribution. However, they have to adapt to the new way of selling uh, commodities. Now they are no more as isolated warehouses or self service centers where you could just sell your products to the company, uh, to the consumers. They have to become more of an engagement center where consumers can come and know about the brand and understand what are the offerings. Apart from that, they can also intertwine with the internet uh, retailing aspect. They can be uh, something like uh, if consumers are making purchases online and would want to return the pro product, they could go to these retail outlets and return them back and vice versa. Last one is emergence of the ethical industry. So as earlier spoken, sustainability is now growing and people are becoming more and more aware about it. So earlier it was the sole responsibility of the government and the NGOs that are there. However, now it is becoming more of an individual responsibility and also responsibility of the companies to demonstrate that they are sustainable and ethical. So companies are trying to do this by uh, initiating a lot of YSR activities and they are trying to market this to the consumers. So this demonstrates that these activities need not be functioning in isolation. They can be intertwined and uh, make profit as well for the companies. Apart from that, earlier it was that key, the consumers were going to, uh, uh, consumers were you know trying to understand the final offerings. They were trying to know if it is sustainable or not. Even companies were trying to market the final product if it is sustainable or ethical. However, with changing times, consumers are now trying to understand the entire supply chain or the entire manufacturing process and see if these products are sustainable or not and then make a particular choice about uh, selecting a product. Thank you so much for your patience. I would be more than happy to answer your questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it is very important uh, or it could even be applicable to color cosmetics. So if you see the biggest uh, voice in color cosmetics earlier was about being animal or cruelty free, which is changing over the period of time. 
though uh, you see other economies such as Thailand as Sir spoke where you have snail being used in the color cosmetics, but you don't find a lot of these in India. So it is changing in the Indian environment. Apart from that, even the packaging part of it. So you see that these are very small packaging units. Can they become more sustainable? There was a lot of plastic that was consumed. Can they be substituted by cardboard or some other material? And another one would be water. Color cosmetics, the manufacturing process requires quite a lot of water. Can they become waterless? Uh, so these could be some major areas where you can uh, include sustainability. These kind of claims of sustainability in color cosmetics, mm -hmm. uh, is it uh, more consumer driven? Is it that the consumer is asking and the Yes. So even from a consumer's perspective and even companies uh, want to demonstrate that they are ethical. Because if you see if there's something that goes wrong, people are making a big hue and cry over the internet. They're trying to bring down the company and they're saying that the products are not good. And uh, as per our lifestyle survey which I earlier showed, consumers are now reading the labeling behind the products. They want to know what goes into the product, what is happening and is it uh, user friendly for them. Hello, uh, can I know if, do you have any data about probiotics or prebiotics being used in uh, skin, personal care product, products mm, at all? I would have to check and get back to you for that. Okay. Uh, hi, actually the numbers that you shared just now are quite encouraging, like there is only growth that we can foresee now. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, one point actually I was expecting somewhere was uh, regarding value for money. Mm -hmm. and, but you clearly mentioned that there is a higher uh, increase in disposable income. Mm -hmm. But now that there is a wave of economy slowdown nowadays. Sorry, I can't hear you. There is a wave of economy slowdown mm -hmm. and uh, for the basic things are quite expensive and cosmetics mm -hmm. clearly fall in the category of higher, dis if we have mm -hmm. higher disposable income only then I'll invest in that. Sorry, from a consumer. I, I am not able to hear you. Uh, I'm saying that uh, uh, for the basic, uh, commodities, they are becoming quite expensive nowadays. Mm -hmm. And in this uh, wave of economy slowdown, um, cosmetics fall in the category of a clear higher disposable income. Okay. And over there, I will, as a consumer, I will look for value for money. Okay. Uh, so, this would be a yeah. perception. Uh, there was a very interesting article that I was reading a few days back. It spoke about lipstick index. So rightly said uh, that the economy is slowing down and consumers might ward off about uh, ward off away from products which are for consumed for their luxury so if you see something like an automobile yeah. the growth is slowing down but uh, the article spoke about even though commodities like these are slowing down a product something like a lipstick is is not slowing down at all it is still showing a consistent growth because it is cheaper compared to 4 lakhs it is only 2000 or 1500 bucks so cosmetics is, is still something that consumers or women consumers would want to splurge. You see, uh, you know, the statistics globally, mm -hmm. uh, is India like kind of uh, matching that or is it taking a, you know, is it uh, the, the rate of growth, I, I mean, in so various segments, yeah, the aspects that you talked about, like mm -hmm. sustainability and all those things. So would you think that India is in, in the same as that because in makeup we are still much behind mm -hmm. if you look India is still uh, you know very far away from the West yeah so these aspects does it you know find relevance in India obviously so uh, consumers earlier did not have access to these products or they did not have the financial uh, access to purchase these products so this is changing so e-commerce itself is bringing a very big change so companies such as Nike uh, are not only sourcing uh, homegrown products, they are sourcing from different countries. So if you go to a retail outlet, maybe you might not even find that product in a retail outlet. But they are trying to source from different countries and they are being purchased by consumers. So definitely the need is there. We are not close to an economy such as Japan or uh, US, but we are definitely picking up and we expect to grow. Uh, largely because of the population that we have in the country, we don't see this uh, you know, slowing down in the near future. Apart from that, uh, now women are working more. You see them going out and they would want to look good. 
So doing, looking better is something that is imperative for every human being in this audience. And uh, people who want to look at that point would want to spend. They would be willing to spend. Hi. Um, I would like to know in colored cosmetics, mm -hmm. what is the percentage of natural ingredients being used in India? Mm -hmm. so, so I do not have the statistics as of now with me. But I could get back to you for that. Anything else that I could answer? OK. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, you can ask me quick questions even after the presentation. I would be around, and my colleague, Mr. Pranay, is also in the audience. So you could reach out to both of us and get your questions uh, resolved. Thank you so much.